What's up? It's your girl Ashley. I be balling with the I be balling basketball show. You already know. Stay balling, ballers. I'm about to cover the 2024 WNBA draft. It, it obviously had a lot, a lot of hype. You know, Caitlin Clark, we all knew she was going to go number one to Indiana Fever. And I know, like, the, you know, the, the Fever, man, they blessed, man. They got three number one picks in a row. You know, obviously they got Caitlin Clark now. Last year they had Aaliyah Boston. And the other year they had Smith. So it's like, y'all... Y'all loaded, man. Y'all loaded. And at the pick and roll game with Boston and Smith, you know, Clark is going to have so much fun. And she she was like, I'm just going to pass the ball to Leah Boston every time. And, you know, obviously people look at her range. She got a lot of range. She can shoot from the logo. Swish, swish. And she does it with ease. You know, her teammates tried. They, they, they couldn't do it. And so she can also blow by you, too. She can score um, three levels, get those layups, get those threes, right? But now that she got even more weapons than she's ever had at, you know, Iowa, you know, she's never played with a player like Boston, you know. And so that's just going to create even more for Clark, you know. So she averaged like nine assists in college, but who knows how much she's going to average, you know, in the WNBA. You, you know, maybe she may not, you know, average 10 the first year, but, you know, eventually she's going Because I feel like sometimes guards can score and shoot, and sometimes they can pass. But... The great thing about Clark is she can do both. And obviously passing, you know, people are like, eh, they don't really watch the game for passing. It's more scoring. But the fact that she can do both and the fact that, you know, she she's going to play the same way. Because why would you stop that, right? So I just think the fever, you know, they got, they got a great core. You know, they got a great core. Oh, they also got uh, Kelsey Mitchell. She's a great uh, guard, and so, man, I'm excited for the Fever. They got a great young core, and so, yeah, they shouldn't get no more number ones anymore. Nah, nah. They should, you know, start improving, you know. Maybe they make the playoffs, maybe not, but if I was a Fever fan, I'd be excited. See, I'm a Spark fan. I am a Sky fan. I'm also an Aces fan. I'm more so, you know, I travel where Candace Parker goes. First, you know, it was the Sparks, right? And Lisa Leslie was my fave. And then she went to Sky. And then she went to the Aces. So you could say I'm those three. I support those three teams. And, of course, I have my favorite players in the game. Elena Deladon, Candace Parker. But let's go to Cameron Brink. She's on the brink. Not nah, splan. She's a great defensive, great defensive big. And I feel like, you know, bigs, they come in, they're making a comeback in both leagues, WNBA and NBA. But she went to the Sparks. She's also, I think her god brother is uh, Stephen Curry, so that's pretty cool. Sometimes I see, you know, Stephen Curry's um, mom at the Stanford games, right? And I think she's going to bring defense. And she's also she's also one of those bigs that got good footwork, you know. She could shoot it. Um, so I think Cameron Brink is going to shine. And she's going to light up a spark. Get it? <laughs> oh, I should have said Kaylin Fark bringing the fever is hot. But, um, it, oh, the third pick, um, was Camilla Cardoza, Cardoso, and she went to Chicago Sky, and 
Chicago Sky is definitely one of the biggest, biggest winners. You know, I feel like the Sparks won and, you know, Fever won. But I also feel like the Sky really won this draft. And they have a front court of the future. But as far as Camilla, you know, she just won a championship. You know, she's 6'7", big body, blocking shots, getting those boards. You know, sometimes she misses, you know, a couple bunnies here and there. Um, I think as she gets stronger, she'll convert more of those bunnies more. But you can't teach size. You can't teach it. You know, it's it got to be in your genes. You can't teach it. So, Sky, they going high. <laughs> Um, oh, fourth. Jackson went fourth, and I feel like maybe Jackson is underrated in this draft because it was such a popular, a lot of popular names, but I feel like Jackson wasn't really getting more love. She's very versatile. She went to L.A., and that's why I feel like Sparks definitely are one of the biggest winners because you got Brink right in the post, and now you have now you have Jackson in on the wing. I, I feel like she's um, very diverse. She could do a little bit of everything, and I feel like sometimes when you do a little bit of everything, you do get overshadowed. Like, what do you really do? Like. Are you like Kaylee Clark, who can shoot the Lobo 3? Are you Brink and Cardozo, who are big bodies and block shots? Maybe it'll her being, you know, multidimensional, I guess you could say. Maybe overlooked her, but hey, don't be surprised if she, you know, if she better than, you know, a lot of what people expect. I think she... Did really well as a Lady Vol. Um, shout out to Lady Vols. That's how I fell in love with Pat Summit and you know Candace Parker. But yeah, they're gonna they gonna be really really great. Um, especially since you know Neka Gumake left. I feel like you know now it's their chance to start over. You know. Um, they got Hamby still on there, so that's good. So fifth, J.C. Sheldon. Um, she's one of those names I didn't know a ton, a ton about. Um, but she played at Ohio State, and from what I heard on, you know, on ESPN, oh, she went to the Dallas Wings. Fly, fly. <laughs> Got those wings. Fly. Oh, my last name is Hewing. So, hey. Oh, shout out to Enrique from the 414. Yeah, you already know. But um, they said they really needed defense, and she's a big scoring guard that can play D. So, I thought that was pretty nice. That was pretty nice. I didn't really watch Ohio State this season. Um, I was mostly just watching the Gamecocks and um, Juju and uh, obviously Double C, right? Um, Aaliyah Edwards, I really like her game. She's one of those other people that I feel like is very well rounded. Leah Edwards, she went to, you know, Yukon, but now she's a mystic. And um Lena Deladon, one of my favorite players, she's gonna sit out though. But Shakira Austin, yo, she might win most improved. I think, yo, I, I think she's gonna be so 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 good. And pairing her up with Aaliyah Edwards, that front court going to be nice to see. They going to be nice. Edwards, um, was it a charge? Was it not a charge? Y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Elite 8, was it a charge? Did she stick her knee out? Did she stick her? Well, God, no. 
it, none of that matters. She's a mystic. Um, shout out to Washington, D.C. But Aaliyah Edwards, I feel like she's very well-rounded. Um, she can, you know, stretch the floor a little bit, like that 15-footer, that mid-range game, you know. But she also, right, can run the floor. She's, uh, you know, um, a good running big, running pick and rolls with her, get air in the post. So I feel like she's very well-rounded. Um, there's nothing really she can't do. Obviously, she has to continue to get better. She can rebound, but I feel like, She's one of the most well-rounded, you know, players in the draft. Um, and, you know, size matters. Size matters. So, Angel Reese. Angel. Sky. I think that's so dope. You know, Angel, Sky, the angels in the sky. But, yeah, like I said, Sky is one of the really great winners. Obviously, they got Cardosa. Um, they... I'm very happy for Teaspoon, very happy for the coach. Um, we need black women coaches, but also player coaches. And the fact that she's getting her chance, I think this is great. You know, their front court, you know, their four and five is, you know, they're gonna, it's going to be there for many years. And I thought, I thought it was pretty funny because, um, Cardoza and Reese, they got history of playing so much versus each other, right? Pulling each other's hair out, you know, you know, trash talking. But now they're teammates, so I thought that's, um, uh, I thought that was very funny. Obviously, I mean, her motor, you can't really teach motor. You either got it or you don't. You either play with that passion or energy or you don't. I'd rather have a player that has a high motor than someone I got to rev up, you know. And that's what what I like about Angel Reese. I like her attitude. She's not going to back down. She's obviously great at rebounding, especially offensive rebounding. She has to, um, I feel like Edwards and, uh, Brink, they can shoot that 15-footer. That's what Angel Reese got to work on, that eight, uh, 15 to 18-footer, that mid-range game. Um, but, but, hey, I saw her shooting in the gym, maybe like on Twitter. And it seemed okay to me. But then again, you know, if you look at Angel, I mean, Asia Wilson's game, she wasn't really shooting threes until Becky Hammond came. And so sometimes it takes a while. Sometimes it takes that coach or that system. So now that she's with the sky, who knows? Because one of those bigs are going to have to develop that 15-footer because it's obviously, you know, I feel like they're going to be good defensively. But Angel's going to have to, you know, and even Cardoso, you know, 15-footer, it doesn't have to be a three, you know. Um, just continue to get better. Um, but yeah, they're going to be a force. Twin Towers, force to be reckoned with. And you know, Cardoza, she played with a little, you know, chip on her shoulder too, you know. She played with that attitude too, so, you know. <laughs> Good luck. Good luck, guys. The future is bright. The future of the league is so bright. And I'm excited for it, you know. Um... Okay, so, oh, and I also thought seven, she was picked seven. That's like a divine number, Angel. I thought that was okay. Okay, okay. The Bayou Barbie. Going to Chicago. Um. So, anyway, the eighth pick was Elisa Philly. I think that's how you pronounce it. Sorry if I pronounce these names you know, wrong. Sometimes if I can't pronounce names, I give it like a little nickname or something like that. Um, but she played at Utah State. Um, she went to Minnesota Lynx. And I feel like the Lynx always builds a contender. For I just feel like they're always going to be good. Um, I think, you know, what? seeing her play with... Uh, Nafisa um, Collier, 
that's gonna be fun. She's sort of a like a undersized post, um, kind of like how Charles Charles Barkley was, you know. Um, but they're very strong, right? They're a force in the paint. She can pass the ball. She has, you know, um, uh, footwork passing. Um, she can do a little bit of everything, I feel like. And, oh, there was someone that said, no, she said it. She said that she is 5'10 or something. And they and she said that, but they listed her at six two, and uh, so I thought that was funny. Um, so obviously, you know, she's not as tall as people said she was, but she corrected them like she don't got no problem because she probably been playing big. Cause a lot of players sometimes they are smaller than you know the average you know, size and height for a position, but, but they play bigger than their height. And, and that that's what she does, you know. Um, okay, so let's go to number nine. I hope I pronounced this right. Carla Letty. Um, I don't know much about her because uh, the next two picks are from France and I don't really watch, you know the international overseas basketball. Um, from what I heard, she's a flashy passer. Um, she likes to drive the ball. So, and some, you know, sometimes uh, it's like a um, draft and stash where you develop overseas and then you come over. So it could be one of those situations for the next picks. Um which they could have, the Wings drafted her, so I kind of understand the whole draft and stash type thing when you already, when you have two picks in the first round. So I can kind of, you know, understand that, right? Um, the only thing, though, I'm like, you got Arike and Satu, so, you know, shouldn't you want to build now? But let me know in the comments what you guys think. Um, but hey, they're building for the future. You still can build for the future while trying to contend. So um, some organizations do that. And some just focus on the future. Some focus on the present. And some do both. So the next one is, I may not pronounce this right. Do not get mad at me. The tenth pick, <laughs> Layla Lacan. That that's that that's the best I can do, y'all. That's the best I can do. I heard um, that she could pass, and she's very very quick. She's also from France. She got picked from. Let me see. Oh, Connecticut Sun. Connecticut Sun drafted her, um, and I feel like the Connecticut Sun. Obviously, I feel like this may be their last year to really do something, right? You know, they got the one of Bonner. I really like her. They got the MVP triple double, the engine. You know, Alyssa Tom Thomas. But I just feel like they gotta figure something out. They gotta figure something out because. I feel like they was always right there at the cusp, and so this is this may be their final year, or they gotta figure out what's missing, or they gotta break it up. I don't know. Hope the sun shines. You know what I mean. Um. So the eleventh pick, Marquisha Davis. I hope I pronounced that right. Old Miss. Um, and I thought I thought her dress that she wore was dope. Um, I, I forgot to talk about the outfits. Um, Angel Reese, I feel like won the fashion with the silver dress. I thought Alyssa Philly. Um, I thought her wearing, 
you know, I don't know exactly what it was, but I know the dress that she was wearing had something to do with her heritage, so I thought that was pretty cool that, you know, there was deeper meaning behind the clothes. Um, but, yeah, I just wanted to say, you know, a little bit of fashion. Oh, um, fair. The second round pick that the Aces drafted, um, fair. I thought her suit was dope. It was shining, you know, and she was dancing and had different handshakes. That was dope. But back to Marquisha Davis, right? She got drafted by the Liberty. Um, and, you know, I feel like the Liberty, they have a little bit of everything. And I feel like this is the year they need to get their get back with the Aces because you have Brianna Stewart, you know, multiple MVPs, right? You have John Quill Jones, right? You got um, uh, Sloot. You know, you have Sabrina and Nescu. It's like, you guys are so loaded. You got the French, oh, you got the French shooter. I forgot her name. She can dribble the ball really well. She can shoot the ball really well. Got one of the best benches. And Marquisha Davis is going to add to that. And even if she doesn't get the playing time she would normally get, you know, learning from all the vets, that's going to help. You know what I mean? Um, so the last pick, the last pick. Oh, I hope I pronounced this right. I don't know if I'm going to pronounce this right. All right. So let me get this right. Her last name is Pouch. Nafu. Nayafu, she's Australia, Aussie, 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 Aussie. <laughs> um, oh, so what I will say about her is she puts pressure on the rim. I heard, I heard um, Rebecca Lobo say that, you know, she reminds her of Kalia Copper. I feel like a lot of people get the Kalia Copper when, you know, you're kind of like, you're athletic, right? You can drive the ball, right? You play with that energy and effort. So, like, play hard, right? And I feel like when you play hard and you, like, you could develop into, like, that two-wing fast, fast breaks, because that's what Kalia Copper does. I feel like... That's that's like a go-to cop for people who play like hard and okay, you could drive the ball, okay, fast breaks, you know, you, you can't be stopped at the rim, right? You could play some defense, you have that energy. So, <laughs> uh, I feel like Kalia Copper is one of those. Uh, how should you say it? She's one of those players that I feel like are always getting that um, comparison. And I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I'm just saying, you know, I'm just saying, hey, guys, maybe pick some other players, you know, to compare. Because it's like so many past and present you know, players, that's all I'm saying, that's all I'm saying, but anyway, um, so I feel like the Atlantic Dream, they got to figure something out as well, um, they have to figure out, like, okay, you have Ryan Howard, now who's gonna help Ryan Howard, that's how I feel, but tell me guys in the comments, who you guys think the winners and the losers are. Um, I did think, I'm not covering the second and third round, but I do think that the Aces getting um, fair from, um, oh, she's like 5'5", five, five, so I think that's why she dropped. Um, 
but she's like the third scorer in NCAA history, right? And it's like, hey, if you can score, you can score. But I feel like her dropping to the Aces is perfect because now you get to learn from Becky Hammond, who was undrafted because of her size. Now she's going to teach you everything. And, of course, Gray, Chelsea Gray. But I'm happy that, you know, she didn't drop too, too, too far. Um, but it wasn't fair for her to drop that far. But congrats, fair. <laughs> and I was when I'm a bet on you. Yeah. Get it? <laughs> Aces. Um, did I say something about the Lynx? Ow! How, Lynx? Dream. Oh, I should say, live your dreams. It's not as hard as it may seem. Or should I do like, eh, 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 like, you know, the dream? Um, Sweet dreams. Oh, that's a nice one. That's a good one. Yeah. You guys might think it's corny. Liberty. Freedom. Let freedom ring. Let, let Marquisha Davis ring. Nice no, one. Uh, but yeah, that was a, that was just a little bit sun. It's gonna shine so bright in these shades. But anyway, let me, let me stop with the corniness. But, um, I thought the fact that the WNBA made a big deal about this draft, like, um, obviously the tickets sold, um, in like 15 minutes or so sold out and I thought that was dope but even the commercials that I saw about how the vets are gonna welcome the rookies to the WNBA and you know you had Stewie in the commercial eating those you know rookie cereals and it was just a lot of different commercials where it was like watch this draft but rookies we here Y'all coming, but y'all gonna have y'all welcome to the league moments, and we gonna embarrass y'all. Y'all better get ready, get in that gym, get in that weight room. You know, that was that was kind of it was kind of like celebrating them, but also you know, um, digging at them, but in a fun, friendly way. So I thought that was funny, and I just think a lot of these, I love it to see their outfits, I love to see their families and, you know, a little bit about their stories and their highlights. I thought it it was all dope. I watched uh, all the way to the third round. Um, and sometimes with the NBA drive, I don't really, I don't really be um, watching every, like, every second round pick, you know. But I think it goes by faster with the WNBA draft. But that but that's just how I feel. But I love that the women's game is growing. I love that Kaylin Clark is a big reason for that. But you can't you know, you can't deny Angel Reese's impact and brings impact on it. And I also feel like oh, Kate Martin um, she got drafted by the Aces. She didn't really expect to be drafted, so that's a good story. Oh, I there was another one. Um, there was a Yukon guard. She was guarding Caitlin Clark. Her name is uh I wanna say it's like Nika. Nika Halls. Um I heard, you know, she can do She's kind of like a 3 and D specialist. She was drafted in the second round. I love that Paige was there. She didn't enter into the draft, but she, you know, came to support her teammates like Edwards. So I thought that was cool. But um, they said that she probably, you know, dropped because of her ceiling. And sometimes people always talk about potential and ceilings. And for me, it's like, can you play? Are you going to have a long career? 
If that is so, then you should get drafted, right? Um, but yeah, that's that's what I think. It's Cause sometimes it's like potential. Can the person reach their potential? We don't know. We don't know if the person can reach their potential. So sometimes, like if I had, especially multiple picks, I'm, I'm, I, a lot of people bank on potential, but sometimes that doesn't, you know, it doesn't manifest. But can you play now? Everybody talks about ceilings and what. You don't know a player's ceiling. Ceiling, you can only guess. I want to know if you can play now. If you can play now, then I'm going to draft you. Because, sure, I can bank on potential. And sometimes you might hit a bang, you know, and a boom. But sometimes it's like... Shouldn't have banked on potential, you know. Things happen. I, I, I would pick players that can play now. and But I do think that this draft was very great. I do remember when it was, you know, the Brittany Grinder and E-double-D and, you know, Skylar Diggins draft. That was a big draft that I felt like a lot of people tuned in to watch. And I compare that to this draft, only it's a little bigger um, because, it, um, you know, the record-breaking record, record numbers of it peaked, you know, um, peak numbers in the championship game, 20, 24 million it peaked to, and so overall 18 million people viewed it. I mean, the views are just crazy. And so, yo, shout out to Don Staley, too. She's a big part of that, too. Um, Cardoza, you know, uh, LSU. It's women's basketball is on the rise. I'm definitely going to watch Paige, team to watch her. You know, she's probably going to go number one. And, of course, I'm going to watch Juju. And there's a lot of lot of great players. Um, a player that I uh, like watching. Um, she's on the Gamecocks. She kind of, I like her acrobatic um, layups. Um, Malaysia Foley. So yeah, overall, I thought the draft was great. I thought it may be. I thought it was just as good as the NBA draft. Even though the NBA, you know, they got much, much, much uh, more money and resources, I thought this was just as good. Um, um, I thought, I guess some things that they could improve on. Oh, the whole Haley thing with the Cameron Brink was really tall and then they zoomed in and then Holly Rowe was short. That was funny. But I think something that is a little weird, I don't know why the commissioner holds the jerseys like this. I don't I don't know why one person can't hold it like this and one person hold it like this. Um and I don't know I think it's because of their hair. Cause usually like they put the hats on. But I think maybe they don't put the hats on because and they're more focused on the jerseys. They don't really put the hats on until they're behind the scenes. But I think this was a good draft. A lot of people hate on Holly Rowe saying she ruins the draft. But, I mean, no one's perfect, right? I don't think she ruined the draft. A lot of people say she's ruined a lot of drafts. But to me, I think Holly Rowe's nice. No one can be perfect. Not everybody's going to like the reporter. But overall, I think it was dope. But thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know if there's a certain WNBA team or a certain WNBA player that you want me to cover. 
and I also cover basketball movie reviews, and I also do NBA and college. So let me know in the comments what you want me to cover. Um, my next video is probably going to be on a basketball movie. I'm not going to tell you which basketball movie it will be about, but it's going to be a hurricane. Let me know if you can guess it. But also, I want you guys to go to the YouTube channel, Road to William. That's my cousin's channel. William covers black entertainment, black news, black culture, black icons, black stars. And also talks about the LGBT community as well. She talks about the... Um, trials and tribulations of the community and so also go to rtw road to william go to that channel and check it out because there's a lot a lot of videos for everybody but but also i want you guys to remember to stay balling swish peace i'm out PG is free, back with the mercury, Lit. dominate with dunks in the paint, can you score over BG, no you can't, no, no, point no. God, Jesse Gray.